but there, there's reasons why companies tend to like shy away from like paying for these type of things and it generally comes from non-technical leadership at companies so like um like ceos who are coming from marketing or sales generally speaking that's that's where that's we're going to run into these type of issues and oftentimes those specific companies those, those specific uh people have been taught that it is a cost center accounting is another place yes so cfo like finance marketing and sales so oftentimes they're taught that it all of it which includes engineering is a cost center and a cost center uh in case you don't know is a business term for a part of the business that you have to have that costs you money and doesn't provide new money in it's a good it, like it's good to know where the cost centers are so for example uh the generally speaking systems administration is a cost center because you have to keep your servers running but um you, if they crash you're going to start losing money but by itself your customers don't want to pay you for the systems administration they want to pay you for the product therefore it's a cost center you tend to think of it as savings generator but yeah well there there are other ways to sort of think about it like it can still be part of a value stream but be like a cost center within the value stream uh now this comes back from harvard business review in like the early 2000s there was this like big article where somebody somebody famous or something wrote wrote like a your it is a cost center and it got shared everywhere it was super popular and like all the mbas talk about like oh yeah like you know it is a cost center be careful with it because Think about what IT was back then. It was like the emails, it was your website, it was things like that. Now, the problem is that software is, especially for, for most companies, software is the product. And software is in IT. And when your product is in IT and you consider IT to be a cost center, then well, where's the profit centers? A lot of uh, CEOs who are non-technical sort of, they don't really understand what's going on with the product and they forget, they, they look at accounting and they say, oh look, all the money is coming in from sales. All the marketing is coming in, well, why do we get sales? Because of marketing, because of like the advertisements we do. And so they reverse it around and we get we get sales and marketing are profit centers in their mind and IT is a cost center. And so what do you do with a cost center? You try to reduce the amount of money you're spending on it as much as possible. And then you increase the amount of money you're investing into your profit center and then you're going to get more profit out of that. As you can see, this can be really, really dangerous. And it's one of the reasons why it's super important to have a diverse uh, C-suite, because you need to have somebody from every single or part of the organization involved in the decisions. And what I've noticed is that having a CTO as the only technical representa only representation for technical side is not enough because they don't listen to the CTO. If you're a CTO, I hear you. I'm sorry. They don't listen to you. And I know that. Uh, now, if you're, if you're COO, if you're CPO, if you're CEO are all technical, CSOs don't count, sorry. Sorry, security officers. You're, you're usually also technical and they also don't listen to you. If they, if they're technical, they'll be listened to. So getting the CEO on board, 
to like actually understand how the business really operates is like essential. You also don't want your CTO CIO to be C-suite in name only. Well, yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we can probably talk about. You feel like watching the stream is therapeutic because we don't have a culture of listening to technical folks at previous that it's um there's a book called a seat at the table which is written for ctos by ctos talking about how to get the rest of the uh c-suite to listen to you to like let you have a seat at the table because i've worked with ctos where like i've you know, they tell me like, oh, uh, yeah, they just had a big meeting about like the direction to go and they didn't, they forgot to invite me because like, I'm just the technical guy. They're just gonna tell me what's gonna go on. And your CTO is gonna be, um, they're feeling the exact same things that you're feeling. A CISO, oh, geez, what is a CISO? Definition. Chief Information Security Officer. Yep, doesn't count. Info, it, the Information Security Officer is going to be ignored too. In fact, probably more than the CTO. Oh, you didn't catch the whole book name? Here, let me see if I can find it. Here it is, a seat at. Okay, that was interesting. A seat at the table. This is a, I have not read it, but my boss who was the CTO uh, read it and uh, has good things to say about it. Um, also, if you're a CIO, it's the same as a CTO. Like anything with information technology or whatever, doesn't really matter. Who will think of the poor tech CTOs? The brave man will. Um, so here's a here's a fun fact. Uh, CTOs are the most fired C-suite member. It's just an unfortunate fact of not being listened to. In it, like when you're not listened to and they're not bringing you into the meetings, when things go wrong, who do you fire? The person you're not listening to anyways. The board of directors for most companies don't really run things the way that I think a lot of people think that they do. Uh, they, they're, they hold the CEO accountable, yes, but the CEO generally can like run stuff. The CEO is powerful in the fact that they set, they, they're supposed to be running the team and managing the C-suite of people. Uh, and so they set the culture. And if they don't set a good culture, uh, then it's over. Like there's nothing that you can do in the rest of the business. Like um, my, one of my specialties is to go into a business and uh fix up it's so, like i started by making the team really good and i can do that then i did it like the entire department and i can do that i've done it before uh what i've learned is that if you don't have an ally in the ceo uh trying to make everything better from the top down and from like the middle out it doesn't matter it's going to end in pain and suffering and usually the end of the company It just, it, it's just an unfortunate tr truth. Gordon Ramsay style. I do not yell at people. I'm, I'm much nicer when I do stuff. However, I am like pretty solid on like, no, we're doing it this way. Like, 
I remember I, I I was talking to one person and they're like, okay, we're implementing agile, we're doing this type of stuff, and you're like, oh, like safe, and I'm like, no, we're not. Well, safe isn't like I don't care. Well, I'm not doing it. Uh, I'm not doing safe. So no idiot sandwiches. The the biggest thing, and this is all part of like leadership, and I'd be like, I want to do a course on leadership uh, sometime. Um, especially technical leadership because a lot of people get promoted to management by being good at programming and have no clue what they're doing and it's a lot of people want to not be a manager because all they know are terrible managers and they think that that's what you're supposed to do that's what you have to do and it's not true you can be an amazing manager and not be a total jerk or asshole or anything else like that there are there are ways to do it and it all comes down to management and practice programmers don't really like to maneuver for leadership positions it seems i think that they don't like to because so many managers are bad at it that they're like it's just sort of like feeling that you're you're turning into a bad person you become a villain when you become management because that's what management does especially in like well i, I would say especially all throughout the companies most people are made manager of zero training yes exactly there is something called um promotion to your what is it called promote you're promoted to your level of failure or something like that which is Oh, you're good at your job? You're promoted. You're good at your job? You're promoted. You're good at your job? You're promoted. Oh, you're terrible at your job? Okay, you stay here. We don't train you. We just you're now just stuck there in a terrible in a in a terrible position where you're terrible at it. You know you're terrible at it, and that's it. That's your life now. That's the Dilbert guy though. That's also what happens in real life. I've seen it so many times. It really sucks. And I hated I hated the idea of management too until I worked with a, an amazing manager and it was like oh this is what it is and then i worked for another company i'm like oh no i i there's there's so few good managers out here so it oh promoted to your level of incompetence thank you uh radcliffe prime um also hello that's what it's called promoted to your level of incompetence um yeah so i worked i worked as a i worked for a really great manager I eventually we all left that company. We work for our different companies. I'm like, well, shoot. I guess if I want to work in a team that's created by a really good manager, I guess I'm going to have to do this myself. Because like, if you wait to find a good manager right now, you're not going to find it. So somebody has to step up and do it good. So that's what I ended up doing. The Peter Principle states that if you perform well in your job, you will likely be promoted to the next level of your organization's hierarchy. You will continue to rise up the ladder until you reach the point where you can no longer perform well. Yes, exactly, exactly. And um, so many companies don't understand this, which is so... It doesn't make any sense. It, do it doesn't make any sense at all. But... That's that. That's a um, uh, leadership type stuff, and management is a uh, is actually now become a passion of mine. So I love talking about it. Well, that's a different thing. Um, blah. The like you will be asked to work for the point of your skill. Uh, bad managers tend to do that because they think they're getting more out of you. Uh, by doing that and that's actually not true they're going to get less out of you but they're going to feel like they're getting more and so like their brain rewards them with dopamine when they do it and so therefore they think that they're supposed to continue that uh and again like that that would be part of like a management a, a management leadership course i could create is like how to actually be uh how to actually like run a high performance team without burning everybody out and making everybody hate you because like that's the thing um yeah 
you've been asked by college students how to cope with that dynamic. If you're an employee in that situation, it really sucks. Like you, you have to learn how to lead from behind and like basically do something we call manage up where you manage your manager. And that takes a lot of communication skills. It takes a lot of safety, uh, like psychological safety. Uh, there's a lot of things that require like there that you need to have in place in order to do that. And one of them is uh, security in in your own situation. And I got stuff because they they're really convinced that management isn't that bad. Well, here's if if you're seeing somebody in that situation, um, have try, try to always have a lot of compassion for somebody. Because remember, uh, here's, a, here's a statement that uh, one of my mentors like to say, which I think like helps explain this. Management is hard, ergo, most managers are terrible at their jobs. And that's okay. Um, I mean, it's not okay as in we shouldn't accept it, but it's okay as in they if they think that their manager is good, it's because they've never had a good manager. So telling somebody that like, oh, this is what's supposed to happen is like literally not even imaginable by them. Like I can tell you all the cool stuff that I do with my teams to get them high performing. If none of you have experienced that, you're going to just think that I'm on like, you know, I'm on the crazy pills and I'm just screaming about some random states or like I'm one of those influencers that go and like talk at a conference and charge like $10,000 a seat, but no real, like it's not reality that I'm talking about. The thing is that I've seen it. I've actually done it, but I've only like influenced, you know, certain teams. It's like only those people know about it. Thousands and thousands of you will never have seen that, which is infuriating to me, which is why we need to do better. It's really hard to manage up when you're underpaid and overworked. Yes, absolutely. It is super, super hard to do that. You need to be safe and secure uh, and there's an entire psychological stuff behind like of why you need to be safe and secure because you will, your own body and brain will remind you that a confrontation, which managing up is confrontation, will uh, potentially result in you losing your job. Even if it's not true, even if you know that you won't lose your job, your body won't know that. Your brain won't know that. And so, therefore, you need to, like, be able to remind you, like, oh, I'll be fine. I have I have three months. I have six months of savings. If I get fired from this, I'm perfectly fine. If you don't have that, you can't manage up. Not really. You have to work on, uh, you have to work on your own um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs first. This is why... Toyota makes better cars. There's an entire series of like people talking about why Toyota is so good at that. They literally wrote several books on how to build management teams and leadership teams across the entire company for it. It's not just the Kanban. It's also what the Kanban enables within their system. The Toyota production system, TPS. The social safety net aspect? Yes, there's so many things. Um, I'm actually recording a podcast recently with uh, my 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 ex boss, uh, the CTO that I was mentioning, um, and he uh, uh, we're we're eventually going to release that. And there's going to be a lot of leadership type stuff in it. So I eventually want to like start being able to record those maybe on a stream or something because I think it'll be super fun to like even do like live live commentary or chats or like even take questions from people about like leadership stuff. 